summer and I just redid it. I mean, all these drawings weren't even pinned up the day of the uh, competition. This interior rendering was after I learned uh, uh, Rhino. So I encourage you guys to do that because, I mean, these are the things that they're going to look at. And another thing that I did was, it's very, very important that you guys take a little bit of time, because I know you guys are super, super busy, and after every project, what I did, I put away a couple of days and I worked on my portfolio, faithfully, after every single project. When it was time for me to present, well, um, submit my application to UTSA, I wasn't scrambling. I had friends that were, were, were in studios with me and called me, hey, can you guys help me this? My portfolio is due next, next week, blah, blah, blah. I didn't have to do any of that because you have to prepare yourself that. Because if you wait till the last minute, I mean, it might not look like it to you, but a professor or whoever the jury is, they're going to know that you threw it together in the last minute. So it's very important that you guys do it towards the end of every single project. Now this professor here was Kevin McCullen, and uh, the reason I picked him was digital fabrication. You guys remember where I went back to saying how you research your professors? And this guy worked with uh, Zaha Hadid in New York. He was a brand new professor. I was kind of skeptical when you know I read his bio, but I said, hey, this is the last studio, <clears throat> and I'm going to give him a shot. So as you can see, everything was about connections. This whole project was about connections. And he approached the design with, with a sculptural, you know, kind of a sculptural idea of creating a sculpture piece using architectural uh, connections. So all these prefabricated metal pieces was put together, and this was a collaborative project. Was this was included the entire studio? This project cost me some friends too, so. <laughs> but it was great because it was a totally different approach from what I was used to. Next one. I'll speed this up a little bit. And that's just the finished project. It was, it was about five feet high. And then I um, got my first internship working at HEB's um, uh, Construction and Design. And while I was working there, everything was just, I mean, it was all about producing. So there was no design aspect. So I took it up on myself to do a competition. And um, this was just a small competition to design a house um, based on a pro uh, your client's profile. And I actually, <laughs> everything goes back to SAC. The site that I used was given to me by uh, Mr. Blunt in Design One. Mm -hmm. I kept it for four years. I did this competition. That's the site that's somewhere in Cannon Lake. And uh, just. And that was it. So that's my portfolio. And I show you guys this to say that, <clears throat> you know, like I said, you, you, you go on the different websites because I was doing this constantly and you're looking at the works that the guys are producing at UT, you know, Cy Arkin. I was thinking to myself, man, I want to do that. You know, so what I had to do was come up with an idea for myself, how to choose my professors to do this, you know, and also how to be self-motivated. Because going to UTSA, here was the big shocker going to UTSA. At SAC, your professors are constantly on you. Hey, you're do you're you're do this. These drawings are do this. How many drawings do you have to show me a pinup? Um, what stage are you in the design? Uh, I remember all our professors, Ms. Ms. Uh, Garcia, uh, Professor Bolasov, um, even Kino and, and Freehand. They have a set schedule for you and what's due at each point of your design. Well, going to UTSA was a huge shock because guess what? There's no schedule. All you get is a project. And what they're going to do is saying, okay, in two weeks, the preliminary design, you know, schematic design, design, design development. I mean, it's broken down. To, which, which, there's nothing wrong with that because that's how we approach projects at work. But um, there's no one coming after you saying, hey, you haven't turned in this. You have this many drawings that's due, blah, blah, blah. It was a huge shock to me because I was so dependent on my professors when I left here. My first semester was really tough. But what I had to understand was you have to you have to have initiative, you know you have to take the time to to make your own schedule, and that's one of the things that you're going to come up, you, you're going to find out at UTSA, the professors are not going to hold your hand because I mean we're adults. I mean I know you guys I was older, but some of you guys, I mean 18 years old you're an you're an adult, so they're not going to keep telling you to do your projects. You've already paid your tuition. You have to you have to produce. So that was one of the big negatives for me 
And really, it really wasn't a negative because if you, if you want to do architecture, I mean, you have to be self-sufficient. You have to be motivated. You have to be disciplined. You have to follow up on your projects because you know what, guys? <laughs> Until you, when you go out in the real world and you don't turn in some drawings to a client and they call you in their conference room and ask you why, you can't blame it on anybody because there's no, no professors around for you to win that all. You know? So all these things, are they, they're, they're preparing you for it. So, you know, and, 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 and that might, you guys might look at that as a positive or a negative. And also, um, what was a, a big positive for UTSA for me was, I was able to, you can at any time, go, go to the um, architecture department and speak to a counselor. And what I did, I went ahead and printed out my curriculum and I would make a habit to go in and, and speak to a, profet, uh, a counselor every couple of months. I mean, those guys knew me when I was coming in because that's, that was important because I also have friends that at the end of the, the, uh, the two years transferring, they'll come back and say, hey, you guys are not graduating. You need two more classes. So that was another thing. They do not follow up on you to make sure you check off every single box to graduate. So that's, that's very important. And I mean, you know, the, the design approaches that from the different professors is what I really appreciate. Whether positive or negative, I take it as a positive because every single person, you know, is different. And what that does, it teaches you to, to learn how to work with different individuals because you're gonna come across different uh, personalities and you have to adapt. So the biggest thing I can tell you is um, there's not gonna be a whole lot of holding your hands going at UTSA. You have to do your research on your professors you have to do your research on the counselors you want to see, you, you you want to visit on a you know um, whatever basis that you, you try to do that and you have to pick students this is I mean this is a big thing too coming from SAC we were kind of this little little clique because we, we all came from SAC we transferred at the same time how many of you went over you recall roughly I would say probably about 15 about 15 of us transferred at the time and um, it was really funny because we were split evenly. I would say about five of my SAC mates were in every single studio that I took. So we, 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 we developed this kind of, you know, alumni clique type thing. And it helps us because, you know, you go to, a, a, you go to the UTSA guys and to be honest, um, automatically coming from SAC, there's an expectation coming from, set on you. And if you don't meet those ex expectations, your former SAC students are gonna let you know it or the professors will. And to be honest with you, it's almost it was almost like a competition between us and the TSA kids. But it was great because we kind of fed off each other. So, you know, the, the, the camaraderie that we had coming from SAC was great too. So it's just very, very important for you guys to just be really, really prepared. And um Sal's gonna talk about the application process, but like I said, the main key, the key things that I just want to hit up on was portfolio, going back and do your portfolio every after every single project, and also be prepared. I was, like I said, I was limited. And two, researching your professors. They're all different, whether positive or negative, but each, each professor have a unique approach to their, their design, whether it's sustainability, uh, working with the community, all these different things, so you have to research your professors and and just being self sufficient, being motivated. So, can I ask real quick? Yeah. So, was everything accepted in your application? Uh, were you accepted fully into Junior Studio? And then I'm looking at it, and I'm going, well, 2008, so uh, this is only 2011. Did you then complete your three years exactly on time? Yes, I did. So, that's a tribute again to all of this that you're talking about exactly. your self organization, your counseling, and right. your own. Because I knew, because you know, I've talked to guys that were at UTSA for four or five years. My goal was to go in and be done and be working. So you set a plan for that. I was accepted in junior studios. We had a few guys that were accepted in design four, or we even had guys that were bumped back to design three. And it was all on your portfolio submission. It wasn't even so much your, your GPA. I mean, most of us had similar GPA. It was all on portfolio. So you just have to stay on track. You guys have any questions for me? I know, um, uh, 
on the website, there's no set number of pages actually on your portfolio that are required. Mm -hmm. And uh, since you have gone through the whole portfolio application process, what would you say would be a safe number of pages in your actual portfolio? Well, he can probably answer Seven that better than me, but I can remember when I applied, there was a maximum amount that you can submit. And at that time, I want to say that you couldn't submit more than 30 pages. So I don't know what it is now. You, you could probably, you know, speak on that. But um, I, I tell you what, you can go in. You can make an appointment to go talk to a counselor from the uh, architecture department. You guys are aware of that, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, you just make an appointment. The worst they're going to do is tell you, no, you're not a student. You can't come over. But most of the time, those guys say, yeah, you know, you apply, especially if you've already applied, because you have to apply before you apply to the program. So if you get accepted before, I think I was accepted to UTSA before, you just make an appointment, go in, and say, hey, I'm getting ready to put my portfolio together. Can you help me out, give me any tips? And also, I mean, there's a lot of guys that came from SAC. You know, you guys can get some contact information. Myself, I, I have no idea. You know, I have no problem helping you guys out. You can just call, uh, call one of the guys or guys that previously um, graduated and say, hey, how many pages did you have? What was your your portfolio approach? So don't just look at the website. Make an appointment and go over there or try to get with a student that, that just went through it. You said in your portfolio that you mix both computer and hand drawings. Mm -hmm. That was a really good job in this portfolio. But what, should, what did your portfolio look like from SAC, just SAC? From SAC, my portfolio was, because we used SketchUp. We did use SketchUp towards the end. So you saw that project with um, um, Ms. Garcia. Mm -hmm. uh, those renderings were done in SketchUp. <coughs> so I still had a combination of Photoshop overlay. I think they're still teaching Photoshop and things like that. But the bulk of it was hand drawings, but I still mixed in some uh, digital. So you could. Yeah. Kevin, I may even have a copy of his that you can look at. Yeah. <coughs> yeah that's, I've seen a lot of portfolios, but that was really good. Thanks. Is it good to like mix things? Because um, do I like stick just with my portfolio for uh, architecture, or do I also put like the uh, stuff that I did for my associates for graphic and design for ITT, and I also got my real estate license? Should I put that in there with my portfolio? Well, here's my here's my take on that because another good site. I don't even know if I want to give you guys a site because there's a lot of negative things on it right now because the the the, the career field is seen. I mean, we've been. It's been seeing this ups and downs. But another site that I've been on is uh, Arconnect. Have you guys ever been on that site? And this is a site you where you down. Yeah. A piece of And what it is, you can go out to the site, and uh, a lot of these guys, they'll go out and they'll post their portfolio and ask for um, opinions on their portfolio. And, um, and the reason I brought this up is because this, this is, it, it's a constant discussion on this site. Because if it's drafting stuff and you're applying for the second two years, you know, I wouldn't put it in there. Just That's just my opinion. But architecture is a field, it's about creativity. So say you went to Europe and you took some photographs of buildings. I would put that in there. It's about exploration. It's about light and shadow. It's all these things. So. Uh, real estate, I'm not really familiar with the career field, so I can't really speak on that. But anything that hard line, hand drawing, I would not put that in there because it's not showing any type of creativity. What it is, it's showing, um, it, that's more for a job interview type thing, in my opinion. Um, what you want to put in your portfolio is thought process. That's the biggest thing applying to UTSA. It's not about how flash your design is, it's your design approach. All those little sketches that's in your portfolio, they look at that. All those parts you diagram, all those <coughs> perspectives, all everything that has that deals with your design approach, that is what they're looking at. And of course they're gonna look at the end the, the end results. 